Hey everyone, welcome back to Cooking with Chelsea. I'm Chelsea and here we are in my kitchen and have I got a treat for you. We all know that in our history, we have jello molds. They're weird. It's not a family thing that I'm used to, but today we're making aspic salad or fiesta, sorry, fiesta aspic. Check this out. Look at, oops, look at that jiggle. Are you excited? I'm nervous, very nervous, I have to tell you, but stay tuned to see how it's all done and to see what it tastes like. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so are you excited? Because I'm really nervous. I don't, I don't associate jelly, gelatin, jello with savory things. I love tomato. I like some of these other things that are going in the recipe. I like jello. I like jelly. I use jelly a lot. I use gelatin a lot in um, pastries. Um, but I've never combined it with savory. And I don't come from a family where we had the, we have the history of having gelatinized savory salads. Um, yeah, this this recipe and this wonderful book that we're still working from. It was my grandmother's book. It's not one of the pages that has some marks like she actually ever used it. There's a few other jello recipes. Don't worry, those are gonna come in the future. But I figure it, it is time that we need to try some of the more interesting recipes. Maybe not the ones that I would jump right into that I want to eat, but to see if they stand the test of time. And really the first mentions of aspic salad come from the 1300s, from 1375, I believe, in a French cookbook was when it was first mentioned. We're not on tasting history here but that guy's great. So are you intrigued? Are you ready? Are you ready to try savory gelatin? I sure am. No, I'm scared. I'm really scared. Jello to me should not be savory, which is weird because it comes from an animal. It's an animal byproduct, but I associate jello with good things and sweet things. I'm, although I am more of a savory person and I'm a pastry chef, I do more like savory foods as my comfort food. And I like sweet and savory together, but I've never thought that sweet and savory would come together in jello for us here today. But I am trying to do all the recipes in this book at least once, and I'm trying them for you. I haven't tried this myself. I don't come from, from a family that eats um, gelatinized salads regularly. It wasn't a recipe that it looked like my grandmother ever tried. I talked to my dad. He doesn't ever remember her eating it or preparing it for us. So going to be the first time we try this recipe from this book. We have unflavored gelatin powder here. We're going to soften it in some cold water. Um, you, if you've got uh, gelatin sheets, you can also do that. Um, just going to let that dissolve a bit. Okay, and we have tomato juice. We have apple cider vinegar, white sugar, a packet of delicious lemon jello, mm, and uh, celery green onions, shrimp, and peas. Hmm. I don't like peas. I'm not a huge fan of shrimp. Why am I doing this recipe? For you, to, just to try it, because who knows? Maybe this is the recipe that we all needed in 2021 and we just didn't know it. Maybe it's time to bring back jello salads. Maybe not, I'll let you know. Um, so we've got this going, This um, the gelatin is dissolving. We just need it to be soft. It'll kind of turn into a, well, gelatinized little lump in here once it's all dissolved. We're going to put the tomato juice, the apple cider vinegar, and the sugar. And we're gonna put that on the stove and get it boiling. Don't forget to stir it while you're getting it up to the boiling point. Um, you don't want anything to stick or burn on the bottom. Once your tomato sauce, your vinegar, and your sugar are boiling, hmm, we're going to take it off. Yummy, yummy. Give it a little stir. Okay, and we're going to add, see, you can see it's kind of jellified, delicious. We're gonna add the unflavored gelatin into the pot. And we're gonna add the lemon jello packet. Mm. It's 
sweet and salty, delicious, yummy, yummy. Mm. Okay, so just dump that in. Okay, make sure to give it a good stir. Oh, that smells really special. Tomato sauce and lemon and sugar. Does it get any better? Yeah, I'm excited. Okay, so we're gonna give that a stir and then we're gonna let it cool down. We're not gonna let it set. We're not gonna put it in the fridge yet. We're just gonna let it cool down because if you add all the rest of the stuff now, it's all gonna drop to the bottom and you want it to mix and mix all those delicious flavors together, you know? Because mm, cooked peas and shrimp, yum! <laughs> I don't know if I mentioned before, but in the recipe it calls for canned shrimp. I can't find that here in Southern Spain. You can get every other kind of seafood you can imagine canned, but shrimp, no. So I've got some fresh shrimp because we also have great shrimp in this region. And I got canned peas. Mmm, <laughs> they smell so good. It's a lie, but I'm hoping that all together this is just gonna be the best thing I've ever made. That's what we're going for. Okay, I'm just gonna let this cool a bit. Once your um, delicious yummy tomato juice mixture has kind of cooled down a bit, um, it hasn't started to set, but it's cooled down, um, then we're going to stir in all the rest of the deliciousness. So we have the chopped celery. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got the green onion. My favorite, the peas. I'm gonna try one just to see how much I love peas. I forgot. <laughs> Ew. I mean, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. What am I saying? Ew. You might love peas. I mean, if you don't like peas, maybe don't put them in the recipe. I guess I could have just omitted them, but I am trying to do authentic recipes the way they call for them in the book. And we've got some shrimp, cooked, peeled shrimp. Yep, there we go. Into the pot, my friends. We're gonna give that a nice stir. This is really something, folks. Whew. Now, for me right now, I'm tempted to make this a little bit more like a gelatinized Bloody Mary by adding some spice and some salt and some pepper and maybe some celery salt and some stuff that's gonna make it taste good. <laughs> but I'm gonna trust the recipe because I don't know unless you try and my taste buds have changed a lot over the years, so I'm going to trust that these ladies and people from even from the 1300s knew what they were talking about and knew that savory jello was a good thing. So don't knock it until you try it. Let's see how it goes. Um, so if you've got like a fancy jello mold, maybe you have one handed down, maybe your family is really into jello mold, mold, molded jello salad. Let me know in the comments what you like to do with jello, what kind of interesting recipes you like to have, what's famous in your family but so if you've got a great jello mold use that i'm going to use my handy bandy trusty loaf pan here multi-use loaf pan look at how good this looks yum mm. oh yeah oh the sounds <laughs> yep and uh as always because i don't want to waste any of the goodness i've got my spatula out to make sure every last little drop of yummy, yumminess is in that loaf pan. Stop making yucky faces it's because it's not really going to convince you that you want to cook it, is it? Ooh, yeah, no, it's good. It's going to be great. So here we go. Look at that. I'm actually kind of excited now that it's on its way and it's all mixed in. I think it's going to be great. Okay, we're going to put it in the fridge and wait till it's all jiggly jello -y. We'll be back. Here we are. The aspic salad has been in the fridge. It is jello -rific. Oh, Look at that. Um, whew. This is the scary part. I mean, scarier than having to eat it is unmolding it. Um, I'm 
I'm worried about the dismount, folks. I'm worried about the dismount. We've executed it so far, but this is the part that worries me. Do you normally... Like I said, this is new territory for me, doing molded jello stuff. I don't know if you usually... If I should have lined the tin with something? Like oiled it? Greased her up a bit? I'm not sure. Oh, oh I'm scared. I hope it's gelled enough. Okay. Onto the plate. I'm scared, I'm scared. Me being scared. Do this. Nope. Ooh, oh, here it comes. <laughs> here it comes, folks. Here it comes. Are we ready? Let's get our lettuce laid out properly so we don't have to mess with it. Okay, buddy, you can do it. Oh, the noise it just made was incredible. Huh. Well, that is really something. I think I'm failing on my 80s plating. Oh, 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 it's got a texture. That's for sure. If you're a weird texture person, this might not be your dish. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna decorate it. I'm not really decorating it that well. I don't know why I'm... Here we go. Maybe if you actually use a jello mold, it's gonna be nicer than having the, the brand of the muffin tin on the bottom there. A nice little, nice little lemon. There we go to cover up that. It says to garnish it with some ripe olives because I don't, I'm not sure what that means. Where would you get raw olives from or unripe olives? Is there, is there an option for that? Was there an option for that in 1980s Canada? I could get them here. I'm in Southern Spain where they grow a lot of olives, but raw olives, raw and unripe olives are not good. So ripe olives are good, but you still have to cure them so that they actually taste good. No, ripe olives are not good. Ripe olives are terrible until they've been cured and turned into olives that you can eat. So I'm not really sure what they're talking about. Sorry, back to the main thing. How is this for plating? Hope none of my pastry chef teachers are watching because I think I would fail. Let's see, we're gonna add some mint. We're gonna make this look really appetizing until you forget what you're actually eating. Da -da 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 -da. A little bit of leaves here and there. Less is more, more is more, more is more. More is less, I don't know. Let's just keep adding things. Maybe I should have added some mint into this. You know, I'm gonna do a little crack of fresh pepper on top. Oh, look at that. Uh oh. So <laughs> oh, now, I mean, if it was centered in the plate, that might be better. But, ta-da! <sighs> That's something. Now is the moment we've all been nervously waiting for. It's the moment that I am going to try aspic salad for the first time in my life. Is it gonna be a new favorite? I, I'm not sure. But, here we go. <laughs> Why am I more nervous to eat this than I am to eat a lot of the other random things I've tried in my life? <sighs> Here goes nothing. Trying aspic salad for the first time at 38. My mouth is so confused. <laughs> I just don't know what to say about it. 
you should probably try it. You should... Try it, let me know what you think because it's not as gross as I was expecting. It's not terrible. It's weird because it's sweet, but it's tomatoey, which isn't bad. And actually I had some peas in it and although I hate peas, it wasn't terrible. I didn't hit on any shrimp yet. That remains to be seen, but I mean, it's not gonna go to waste. I'm definitely gonna eat it. I don't know if it's gonna be my new favorite, but if you're looking to impress, wow, or just have people go, why at a party? You should probably do it. Let's bring back Jello salads, people. Let's do it. It's 2021. Things are getting weird here. Let's bring back Jello salad because why the heck not? It is what it is. Try it. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe below. I'm going to continue to be confused and to keep eating it. Thanks for joining me.